welcome to our meetup program with English Department, Faculty of Cultural Sciences, UNS Solo. With me, Fentik Sumastuti and... I'm Taufik al Mahmoud. so we are the host of the meetup program. Still, in I colleague, Sally. Hey! So, how are you today, Pak Taufik? I'm good. What about you, Miss Faye? Yes, I'm also good. So, mm -hmm. this time during the pandemic, you have to remember that we are still in health protocols. So, right. continue to stay at home and help to protect our environment. Right. Okay, so Metaverse still in our Meta program in iCollect series. And I just remind you all that this program can be accessed through this, yeah, our YouTube channel. And also through our podcast, Anchor at Spotify.com. Right, okay. So, Miss Faye, continuing our iCollect series, yeah, from the conference that we have on the 8th to 9th September 2020, the International Conference on Communication, Language, Literature, and Culture, right? So, who yeah. will be uh, the speaker that I would like to share for the academic talk for this today's meetup? Right, so for this time, we will have the head of the committee, actually. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we will share the talk from Dr. Dia Ayunila Krishna, SSM Home. Okay. Lectures in English department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, I think you have also invited her to join this program. Correct. Actually, she was in our meetup program explaining about the conference prior uh, to the conference. And it was a successful conference. Yay! <laughs> We're all so happy. All the presenters and the participants, uh, we are, uh, what's so called? Yeah, so it's like have like great support from all the related parties and then incredible presenters in our parallel room session and also the after meeting. And actually, uh, the conference committee uh, right now is preparing for the publication of uh, the conference. Right. It's very interesting that the, uh, you have so many publications right. to journal, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And Actually, so there, there are like a lot of journals uh, affiliated to the conference, including the proceeding that will be published uh, through the AUDL, European uh, Union Library. Okay. So because this is the first, so hopefully you all can join our second, third, and the next conference. Right, we're hoping like upcoming conference uh, of the iColleague will still be held and uh, gaining like uh, even more support from uh, the targeted parties, yeah, including if you are academician, researchers, and also practitioners in the field of communication, language, literature, and cultures, you know, it can be the room for you to share your thought, your research, or even your expertise. Great. So... Dr. Ayu, today she will mm -hmm. talk about, uh, well, her title is a bit long, but... Mm. Uh, what is that? <laughs> yes. Uh, so she will talk about the fairy tale stepmothers. Mm. She said that they're not evil, they're just insecure. Mm -hmm. And uh, this paper will portray the character of Cinderella, mm -hmm. Hansel and Gretel, and Snow mm -hmm. White stepmothers from the appraisal framework. Oh, it must be interesting talk, right? I mean, using a major narrative, especially in the children's story, that we might be easily connected to this uh, story, yeah, especially like, what do you call it? The antagonistic characters of the stepmother. Yeah, and... Yes. Uh -huh. So again, culture, communication, language, they are all involved in this paper. Right, so yeah, the absolutely. Absolutely, the entanglement of uh, the subjects that we have yeah in this conference so who will be the moderator for this session right so again we still have Pak Bayu Budi Harjo mm -hmm. as example yeah uh, the same with our last week's talk so mm -hmm. uh, he is the lecturer of uh, the English department and now he's pursuing doctoral degree in linguistics majoring in translation and when mm -hmm. Okay, so Metaverse, let's welcome and enjoy the presentation from Dr. Dia Ayunila Krishna yeah, entitled The Fairy Tale Stepmothers. They are not evil, they're just insecure, yeah, portraying the characters of 
Cinderella, Hansel and Gretel, and Snow White's stepmother from the appraisal framework. So this talk taken once again from the iCollect conference. Yeah, okay. Metaverse, yeah, enjoy. Next keynote presentation is from Dr. Dia Ayunila Krishna. Before the presentation begins, I would like to read her curriculum vitae. She is a teaching staff at Universitas Plus Maret, particularly in English Department, uh, Sekolah Vokasi or voc Vocational School, and at Postgraduate uh, Program. Her major is also in Translation Studies, uh, and her research interest is mainly in Interpreting Studies, and some of the works of Dr. Dia Ayunila Krishna are scientific articles, academic articles. Some of them are the language evaluation of human characterization in the body of the fish as imaged by Santiago in the novel The Old Man and the Sea and its translation, Indonesian translation. And then anal analysis penokan Santiago dalam novel The Old Man and the Sea dengan pendekatan appraisal. And then depicting the characters of the character of Santiago in the novel The Old Man and the Sea from the systemic functional linguistics perspective. She also attended uh, many academic uh, seminar. Among them are seminar and workshop on improving English skills in 2019, and then seminar national linguistic dan sastra or semantics and structural international seminar culture and language studies in disruptive era and now i will give ibu dr dia ayunila krishna time to deliver the presentation time is yours dr krishna thank you very much by you uh, good morning to all of the participants i hope you are not bored to see my face over and over again Okay, now let me begin with my presentation. Well, the weak uh, stepmother's characters, you know, is prevalent in fairy tales, yes. Stepmother reflects qualities that we associate with evil deeds, and it's all, always enthralling to, to be examined. For that reason, uh, I am interested and curious in trying to portray the character of Cinderella, Hansel and Gretel, and Snow White's stepmothers from a different point of view. And so today I would like to present you my work entitled The Very Tale Stepmothers, They Are Not Evil, They Are Just Insecure. Okay. And Mithya Hayunila Krishna, allow me to explain my presentation today. All right. Okay, so Papa Ibu, if you take a look at this picture, what what's your impression of her? You see kind of scary face there. Okay, and I believe you will say that she's kind of an evil greed and then wicked rage and then uh, vile also empty. Okay. I believe uh, no one will say the opposite. And we always think of them as evil, but if we had a chance to know about their side of the story, perhaps we will think of them differently. Uh, but the question now is how do we portray the characterization of this stepmother that most people do not associate with? And yes, uh, I can say later that they are not always evil okay many scholars had investigated the distinctive character from myriad viewpoints in, in evaluating the characterization and i will uh, explain in here from uh, some some few points on the characterization evaluation and as we can see we have the feminism psychology literally and the last one linguistic that i, I will explain it later so from feminist point of view, for instance, Nanda in 2014 
uh, once said that much of the very tale literature reinforces the idea that women should be wives and mothers, submissive and self-sacrificing. By reading most fairy tales, I came to the conclusion that most of the time, the women are evil and, and the men are there to the rescue. And you know, it sounds unfair to me as a woman. <laughs> Okay, and from from the psychology uh, point of view, okay, uh, it is closely related to human mind, especially those affecting behavior. Uh, Kusner in 2017 expounds a powerful outlook about the character in Snow White that while the queen is all bad, Snow White is too, too good, too pure, too innocent, and and thus unable to discern the evil in her midst. Psychologically speaking, the acknowledged dark forces within her have been projected on, onto her stepmother. And for the literary viewpoints, in fairy tale language, the stepmother embodies traits we associate with evil, uh, rage, envy, jealousy, as we have uh, guessed previously, uh, and also great. And the stepmother is an archetypal symbol, not illustration of real individual whose feelings, emotion, and thoughts we are private to. And all of these findings and viewpoints uh, are worthy of further examination. And for that reason, I try to divulge the characterization of the stepmothers from different point of view. And this one, linguistic, is the framework I choose, specifically appraisal. And I will explain about the appraisal in, uh, in the next slide. So, appraisal. Appraisal is a sub-study of systemic functional linguistic, which simply means evaluating something like individuals, objects, situations, and etc. And this theory was developed in 2003 by Martin and Rose and was improved in 2005 by Martin and White. It consists three elements, three main elements, namely attitude, graduation, engagement, sorry, <laughs> uh, engagement, okay, engagement. And in this study, I will apply only two of the, the elements to disclose the characterization of the stepmothers in the comic story of Cinderella, Snow White, and Hansel and Gretel. And I will explain in brief how it works. As I said previously, attitude is one of the elements of the appraisal, yeah? and, and, and the linguistic evidence of the stepmother's characterization can result in the analysis of attitude, which covers a fact, judgment, and appreciation. Okay. And, okay. and the physical condition or the physical appearance of the stepmothers will be evaluated with appreciation and it later can be classified into reaction, composition, and, and valuations. And for the emotion is examined using the affect aspect, which categorizes the feelings of the characters into happiness, unhappiness, insecurities, security, dissatisfaction, satisfaction, and etc. And for the personality or behavior, they will be examined uh, or analyzed by means of judgment, which, which can be positive or negative. It can be personal judgment or admiration or criticism, and moral judgment of praise and condemnation. It can also be expressed directly or impliedly. And the second element is graduation. Uh, this is the second feature of appraisal. Yeah, uh, one of the Distinctive features of attitude is that they are credible. This means that we can say how strong or, or weak uh, we feel about someone or something. And there are two options for this graduation, uh, force and focus. In force graduation, it is, consists of intensifier and attitudinal axis swearing and metaphors for intensifier for example when we say uh, he is strong versus he is very strong it brings different effect or extremely strong it will give 
different different effects towards someone or something. And then for the the attitudinal lexis, I can I can provide an example. Like when we say someone is beautiful or gorgeous or splendid, that would be different effect or, or impact. And for the sweating, I believe everybody knows that. And also for the metaphors. And for the second one is focus. Focus means experiential categories. Uh, in many cases, the experiential categories can be created by sharpening and softening like this. For example, I, when, I, when I say she is the real artist uh, versus she is kind of artist. Can you see the difference? Yeah, we emphasize it. So it's, it's, it's sharpening when we say real artist and it is softening when we say kind of artist or like that. Okay. And my, my data source is the Bilingual comic, English Indonesian comics entitled The Story of Cinderella, Hansel and Gretel and Snow White. And beside this work also examine the equivalence of the message between the English and Indonesian version. And this will be the explanation for each of the findings. Okay. The portrayal of Cinderella's stepmothers. Okay, I will explain from the appraisal a few points about this character. So from the appraisal, uh, the appraisal, sorry, appraisal few points, the result of the portrayals of Cinderella's pet mother uh, demonstrate that physical appearance does not uh, does not accentuate Cinderella's pet mother. Uh, no linguistic data have been found to provide the physical characteristic of the step mothers. And for the judgment, despite the discovery of some elements of negative evaluation of judgment, the evil characters are still very ob obvious, in particular the form of property ethics, which over an evaluation of the moral aspect. And interestingly, the bad attitudes of Cinderella's stepmother are not perceived as much as her feelings. So the characters of Cinderella's stepmother is this comic is very rich with a sense of insecurity in instead of cruelty. It seems that uh, to, to, to have revealed the stepmother's other characteristic, uh, which is a mother's caring nature who loves her biological kids. And it is shown in the evaluation of happiness and, and, and unhappiness effect. And I'll show you some examples of the um, judgment evaluation in here. As you can see in here, uh, this picture show the situation when when the stepmothers, this one, and the the two stepsisters of Cinderella will leave for the palace to meet the invitation to the prince party, and uh, the bad attitude of the stepmother uh, can be seen from the phrase "keep the house clean." This implies the injustice that she addresses to Cinderella, given that the invitation actually was intended to all, including Cinderella. And it is also reveals in the scene that uh, the, expression, the expression presents itself with the eyebrow cooked, yeah? The, the, the eyebrow cooked like this one, okay? And, uh, However, the, the, the wrongdoing portrayed in the, in the text and picture cannot be defined as wicked, as, as wicked because no lexical signs are suggesting an elevated degree of graduation in, in the expression. Okay, so it's far from being weak actually, it's just cruel. In this case, the character, yeah, it's, it's more justified to name itself as, as cruel than wicked or evil. The but however, have, uh, in the intensity of the uh, characters of the stepmothers is declined in the translation. It is translated in Bahasa Indonesia into Chakala, which I can uh, back translate it into English. It means take care, which in fact gives a positive connotation to the character of the speaker. 
and it could lead to a wrong interpretation unless this text is presented with this with, with picture okay and next is the example of effect evaluation so the insecurities of the stepmothers over the presence of cinderella can be seen in this picture yeah cinderella is a threat to her children and she argues that cinderella is more attractive than her daughters and she kind of hide, hides her fears by saying compared to my daughter she is so ugly and it is illustrate, illustrated with expression that suggests annoyance of the stepmother and this term often signifies a feeling of love that a mother has for her children so i can say that in reality she is just a mother who who, who wants to bring her kids the best okay and her uh, her bad personality never target her biological children and the other example for the effect evaluation is uh, can be seen from this scene that she is portrayed as being very sorry for her mistakes and uh, she's finally allowed to share her happiness with cinderella and this is very rare in cinderella stories in this plot uh readers could feel very much the guilt of the stepmother and uh it is reflected in the word of shame which evaluates the elements of the effect and it is classified into unhappiness misery it creates uh, such a powerful word to reflect the disappointment in the graduation unfortunately in translation there is omission of the expression i can look at you yeah in here we cannot we cannot find it in the translation it is delayed it it's lower the depth of remorse the, the writer intends to convey to the character of stepmother uh, next okay the, the next one is the portrayal of hansel and gretel stepmother from the uh appraisal viewpoint similar to the characterization of the stepmother in cinderella this character is not described in her physical appearance so the evaluation appraisal results in the default of insecurities over the cruelty however the evil side is still can be easily recognized through the plot of the story also the tenacity of the of the stepmother and also for the effect side okay it shows that the effect aspect of appraisal is acknowledged more than the aspect of judgment particularly the insecurity and these are the examples this is the judgment evaluation for the hansel and gretel's mom so tenacity tenacity in here is marked from her behavior that she likes to intimidate and over difficult situation uh, choice for her husband so in this scene she is talking to her husband okay and uh it Im Im implies her dissolute personality she likes to run from her problems something like that and the gesture she makes while uttering her command to her husband also indicates that she's a uh, she has a dominant personality okay. next okay this is the next example so uh, her dominance is not only shown over her husband but also her stepchildren so this this picture show her uh, pet it's to her stepchildren she frequently uh, others remarks that are not suitable to express to kids like this one you use all lovers and in some part of this story she also say idiot something like that when she on actually only means to wake up them from their bedtime she even tweaks her daughter's ear roughly with the anger showing from her eyes in here if you can see uh, and and in, in the indonesian version it is accurately translated into dasar pemalas tak berguna 
So both of the English and Indonesian version, uh, version contains strong annoyance of the stepmothers at the step tutors. Uh, so this is as strong as the source language. And next, the effect evaluation of the Hansel and Gretel's mom. This picture signifies that she, she was too wrapped in misery. She's in fact rich of insecurity due to her poverty. Uh, as you can see here, the expression used, we've been starving up to now and it is translated into kita sudah hidup kelaparan the word starving uh, is the source of her anxiety that prompts her to get rid of her kids and in the indonesian version it is successfully conveyed with the same feeling of insecurity as the original version however there is a slight change in the sentence structure of the translation which also causes a slight change in meaning uh, the word starving is rendered into hidup kelaparan, which results in a different object of evaluation. So in the source language, this, it, it appraises starving, but in translation, it is shifted into hidup or life. Okay, next. Okay, the last one is the portrayal of Snow White's stepmother. And unlike the previous two characters of the stepmothers, uh, Snow White's stepmothers is repeatedly depicted from her physical look. The other two are not, but for this one, she is depicted for, for or she is portrayed from her physical looks, particularly her face. And this belongs to her primary concern as well as the source of her wickedness. Okay, and this is from the appraisal uh, viewpoint. Uh, from the appreciation, sorry, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a mess in here. So the beauty of the Snow White stepmother is represented in a glamorous bold makeup, okay, and and it's it catches everybody's attention, and I will show you that later. That's from the appreciation, and then this is the judgment also a fact so this those three we can we can find those three elements in the characterization of snow white and i'll show you this the example okay appreciation and judgment for the appreciation evaluation the beauty of the stepmothers in here as i said previously it is uh, represented in a glamorous bold makeup that look uh, that catches everybody's attention in here, but sadly in a bad way. People around her cannot deny her beauty, but uh, they find it hard to accept their, their their personality. And it can be seen here that uh, they say jealous, and it is translated into pendengi. And the appreciation shows that uh, she is beautiful, which is equally translated into cantik. Okay, chalice and pandangi, and both of them are equal. Okay, next, um, the example of the effect evaluation. So we can see in here, it made obvious that she is insecure. It can be seen from the expression used, I'm nervous, which is uh, properly translated into aku cemas. Okay, so she already admit that she is insecure. Next, uh, the example of, of judgment evaluation. You know, we can see from this expression that there is no worse attitude than to cause a person to die. Okay, it's very, very evil yeah, to kill. And, and, and this, these harm deeds are depicted in numerous scenes. And this one is the most horrifying, in my opinion. Yeah. So the queen in here asked Huntsman to kill Snow White to bring her her heart and this order is uttered in a heartless expression intensifying her vileness okay and now we come to conclusion before i sum up so, so the result of the study show that among the three stepmothers uh, snow white is evaluated the 
hey, well, the choice words like uh, like kill fishes and then weak and the affirmation for example i'll go to the hut and kill the princess by myself it says it all that that she's the evilest and she rips what she saw at the end of the story she she died a miserable death and probably because you know fairy tales are made for kids so the elders might intend to provide more moral failure to the readers like if you do bad things you you uh, bad things will happen to you and if you do good things good things will happen to you uh, for cinderella's stepmother however it, she's the luckiest the worst words uh, used to portray her personality are not only bad uh, are only bad i'm sorry which is far from being evil she she doesn't seem to give too much problem to her stepchildren as what the other two stepmothers do to to their kids I can say that she's not evil, she's just cruel. And her story ends in happy endings for she expresses her regrets and seek uh, some reconciliation with her stepdaughter. Uh, they, they probably find it hard to accept their new life with the presence of a kid who is not related by blood. Uh, I can say that they are on the same journey but in different shoes. Probably it's easier for Cinderella to to mingle with her stepdaughter because she has kids to struggle for, but a bit difficult for Hansel and Gretel's stepmom, who still wishes for having biological kids. As once she told her husband in, in part of the story, uh, she, she told her husband that we can have a baby when we are okay. So she actually wants to have their, their, uh, her own biological kids. And for her, the poverty and the step kids are milestones around her neck. However, she is still alive uh, until the end of the story and has a chance to find her own happiness. Okay, and for talking about the translation, the result of the assessment shows that the success of the translator in portraying the same character of the, the stepmothers. So, uh, the translator is successfully altered the characterization of the original version. Uh, however, there are still, still some expression that is less less uh, less acceptable due to the different uh, degree of the graduation system. The utterance of "you idiot," for is, for instance, it expresses a very strong feeling of annoyance that should be maintained in translation. So trans translating idiot into boto will cause less uh, expressive meaning. So it will be much better if translated into kamu koblok, okay, to, to maintain the same effect. Uh, so it is having equivalent characterization, something like that. All right. In short, readers expect to experience the same individual as the other intense, and this can only be fulfilled if the characterization is faithfully translated. And yeah, this is the last slide to sum up. So Cinderella's stepmother, she's just a mom who wants the best for her kids. And Hansel and Gretel's stepmom, she's just a normal person who is afraid of not being able to it and Snow White's stepmother she is just a lady who needs compliments and to close this presentation I can say that uh, they are not evil they are just probably insecure thank you very much that's all from me and I'll give time back to the moderator okay uh, thank you very much Dr. Jia Ayunina Krishna Okay, that was uh, the talk from Dr. Dia Ayu Nila Krishna. Okay, so the talk once again was taken from the ICALIC, the International Conference on Communication, Language, Literature, and Culture. So, Ms. Fei, what do you find an uh, interesting part about the, uh, this talk? Right, I love it. Like, most of them are new to me. Like, the appraisal theory, uh -huh. linguistic. Mm -hmm. 
right. I think this is like the linguistic aspect using appraisal and in fact can also reveal the antagonistic characters that actually we cannot view like a certain characters, for example, being antagonistic means that they are all negative in every single aspect of their life. So we can also explore deeper, especially the way of example they were dressed by the author or by narrator of the story. It's really impact the way we do like this, right? Okay. okay, so this is the end of our Meetup program today. Thank you very much for your attention, Meetupers, and still in iClick Stories. We arrived the International Conference on Communication, Language, Literature, and Culture, uh, the conference that was just held by the English Department, Faculty of Cultural Sciences, UNS, on the last 8th to 9th September 2020. And I'm Topic Al Mahmoud. See you again next time. Bye bye.